Hey there, Mason Nation. Uh, everybody, welcome back to uh, another episode of uh, Touch Base, our, mm -hmm. our last of the season, actually, oh, believe it or not. So uh, my name is Aaron Witten. And I'm Ryan Donahoe. And today our uh, topic of discussion, an interesting topic of mm -hmm. discussion, is going to be who do we think uh, is going to be the first big domino to fall in this offseason's free agent class, and what will this do to the potential contract values of the remaining big name free agent on the uh, market. So, uh, Ryan, you want to give me a little info? Yeah, on yeah, yeah. So, uh, I'll start things off. Um, good topic, as you say, always interesting. Aaron comes up with them. He's just, you know, he's just the best and the best in the right. business. But, anyways, um, my uh, honestly, well, first of all, I would like to say, I think, like we were talking before the show, I really do think that Machado will go earlier than most people think. I think it would be smart of him to probably go before Bryce just because. Whatever Bryce gets, most likely people are going to say, Machado, you deserve less. So maybe he wants to set that before he gets a bar that he can hit. He doesn't want to have a cap on his um, potential earnings. You never know. They're both going to get huge contracts. Um, we're talking. I don't really know the, the big guys. I think, like you were saying earlier, too, uh, Kimbrell is probably a big one. It seems like those closers always get out a little earlier. You try and round out your bullpen. Um, I would hope to see Kimbrell go and then maybe down into the starting pitchers and things like that. But what do you think? Well, I have to agree with starting pitchers, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and Kimbrel's a good point because yeah. I feel like they're going to sign earlier because well, if they if they wait a little later, they're not going to get as much money, right? Because yeah. teams yeah. have already spent. Exactly. But starting pitching, I think uh, Patrick Corbin, who we've talked good about before, and uh, we keep saying yeah. maybe he comes to the Washington area. Maybe. I mean, it's hotly debated yeah. that I keep hearing that the Yankees mm -hmm. are looking at him. Well, I mean, yeah. the Yankees are always looking <laughs> yeah, at him, right? Right. Yeah. But they just got the big maple, James uh -huh. Paxton, yeah. in that trade. Yeah. That was a big so, off-season yeah. trade. Yeah, that was um, big. They gave up uh, one of their top uh, heralded uh, left-handers, uh, Justice Sheffield, yeah, for him. Uh, but they got the big maple. They've got a nice rotation, but yeah. that's not to take away from the rotation that the Nats have. But I hope the Nats get Corbin. I think Corbin nice. would be yeah. one of the first. Yeah. I'm hearing reports maybe he gets more than a six-year, $126 million deal than you Darvish did. And in yeah. my opinion, you Darvish was a little bit more accomplished statistically than Patrick Corbin is. But I think we would consider it a uh, success oh, if... Yeah. The Nationals got yeah. Corbin. See, that's what I, I we were talking to again earlier. You know, we talked about baseball. Um, I would like to see the Nats to. I don't want them to get held up on Bryce Harper for the whole offseason. I do think they have opportunities with people like Corbin, maybe Kimbrel, anybody um, really out there because they still have a good team with or without Bryce Harper. So I want them to at least get Bryce Harper an offer, a respectable one, their final one. If he rejects it, okay. If he takes it, great. If he rejects it, they have room to sign other people like Corbin and these other guys because I just don't want to get to February and they're like, we're still just trying to sign Bryce and everybody else is gone. That would be uh, the worst case scenario, I think, for the Nationals. And as you said just before we got on here, they got the Nationals got uh, they signed Kurt Suzuki mm -hmm. to a free agent contract. Yeah. They traded for Jan Gomes, mm -hmm. so they've shored up the capture yeah. position. And to be realistic, they are never going to get Rio Mioto because that's no. an intra-division yeah. trade. Yeah. But they've got the catcher position solidified. If they get Corbin and they get Kimbrel, yeah. I don't know. Maybe they yeah. the, the curse of not getting past the DS. Yeah, maybe. I the mean, the, the, catching, the catching position really has been a huge problem since Ramos left. And even when Ramos is there, uh, their best year, 2016, got hurt towards ACL right before the playoffs. He wasn't there. The Buffalo. Hitting over 300 with 20 home runs. Um, and then other than that, he, he was great. But it's just he got hurt another year. One of their best year towards ACL was out for the whole year. Um, also went to the playoffs 2014, I believe. And so they really have never had, and since then they haven't had anybody. Weeders has been pedestrian. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they haven't had anyone really rounding out their uh, lineup. Um, it's not as if Jan Gomes or Suzuki is going to be in the middle of the order or anything. Severino? I guess Sever he's, he's Severino out now, right? has, and he's just, yeah, he Pedro. really hasn't lived up. He had a great first year. He's exciting, and then he kind of fell off. He hits 190. So, but it'll be great to have somebody finally in the bottom of the order maybe sixth, seventh, um, that can hit, actually hit for average out of the catching position because that's really what they need. Suzuki has a good bat, too. Yeah, he Don't does. take that away uh, from him. He's hit well the past two years. past three years, or, yeah, three years he's hit over 270, yeah. which is, I mean, for, a cap, for catchers. That's yeah, relative to elite. who else they could have, they're gonna, they should be a lot better uh, this year at the catching position, which I hope. But And you never know, maybe Corbin will be thrown to him, which hey, can always Hey, we would help. like that. Yeah. And Kimbrell at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah, and Kimbrell, yeah, that'd be fun. But uh, really, that wraps it up for us today, our last, uh, our last episode, so very sad there. But we'll do it one last time. My name is Ryan Dono. And I'm Aaron Witten. And uh, maybe we will see you another time. Who knows? Probably not. But thank you all for watching. Good luck on your finals. See you later. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Touch Base. And make sure you follow us on all social media platforms and tune in for our next episode.